Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good day to everybody. Thank you all for joining us today as we talk about websites, online marketing in the Middle East. We're delighted that you could be with us today and spend some time with us discussing these issues and these this, this very vibrant part of, of, of the globe uh, and, and, and a great place to have websites and online marketing. So we'll share some of our experience and some of our our, our, our knowledge uh, with you today. And just while the last of you are, are, are logging on, I see you clicking on there, great. Great to see you all today. Uh, just gonna give a quick introduction first about, about us as a, as a company. Uh, so IBT Online, our website is ibt.onl, IBT Online. IBT Online is a US company, um, here, a, a Canadian with a Canadian subsidiary. We have been around for quite a long time, since about 2002. And uh, we are 100% focused on online business development tools. So helping companies grow their exports, their sales, their brand, their business internationally. We do this by going, going global, going local, having localized websites and online marketing uh, for, for international markets. Uh, we, um, We've developed a whole series of online global programs with a variety of U.S. states and also with um, some provinces in Canada. And these are the online global programs, which, uh, which some of you might be familiar with. There's often uh, state or province uh, funding that goes with them. And these are for websites and online marketing uh, for that. So let us know if you have an interest. And today, um, I'll introduce myself first. My name is Susanna Hardy. I'm Chief Content Officer at IBT Online. Delighted to be here with you. I'll be talking mainly about sort of the websites and things like that. But I'm joined by two absolute stars of online marketing. Our online marketing manager, Rita Benhada. Uh, Rita is going to be talking, giving an overview of the whole region and sort of the main, the main drivers on the online world, the online landscape of the Middle East, the GCC, Egypt, you know, the main countries there and both for the website, the online and the internet and the, and the uh, online marketing. And then Joelle Lazarotto is our online marketing director. She, she heads up the online marketing side of IBT Online and has huge experience, knowledge and success with, um, with uh, 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 planning and helping and, 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 uh, and running uh, online marketing programs uh, for corporations across the Middle East. So she's going to be sharing some of the, the sort of best practices uh, for online marketing uh, in the Middle East. Um, right, uh, I can see that oh, you know, many of you are still lo just logging on, just in time to talk about the agenda today. We're gonna talk, uh, we're just gonna go through sort of the online world of the Middle East. So what are the big, the big uh, features of, of, of the area? What should you be aware of if you're thinking about having websites and online marketing for this region? Then I'm going to talk a little bit about Middle East websites. What are their very specific things that you need to take into consideration and, and, and that you need to get your best practice Middle East websites. And then Jarell is going to talk about engagement, conversion, in other words, leads and sales in the Middle East through online marketing. At the end, we've left some time for Q&A. And we'll give you some, some summaries, some next steps, you know, next, you know, what's the next thing to do? As and also some time for, for questions. So please drop your questions into the chat box. We'd love to have a discussion with you about things and, 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 and share your concerns and, and, and questions and thoughts. Uh, so, uh, you know, make it, make it a lively session, put some questions in there. Right, with that, I'm really gonna turn over now to, to Rita to talk to us a bit about the online world of, of the Middle East. Perfect, thank you, Susanna. So, um... Digital is not a passing trend. It's a revolution that is happening right now and um, picking and picking up speed every day. So in the Middle East and around the world, digital technologies are disrupting every aspect of business, government, and individual lives. The digital story of the Middle East has many highlights um, thus far. Indeed, um, the region is heavily invested in the digital age, particularly among consumers, um, in, the, in the UAE, 70 to 80 percent of the population is carrying a supercomputer in their pocket, placing the country in the top ranks of global smartphone penetration. On this metric, Egypt, Saudi Arabia and the UAE score higher than the United States, so 100 percent versus 80 percent. 
social media usage is also widespread. The Middle East um, region is ranked second in the, in the world by number of daily YouTube video views, uh, more than 310 um, million views per day. Then the seven Arab states, which border the Persian Gulf. So we have Bahrain, Kuwait, Iraq, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. Um, total Middle East include Yemen, Jordan, um, etc. So it's a total of 250 million. But for our purpose today, we'll be focusing on a couple of those countries. So the main ones that companies usually look at um, two are Saudi and the UAE. So from the online perspective, they are the most um, vibrant and the typical first destination markets uh, for exporters from the US and Europe. So let's start with um, an overview. Um, let's talk about why the online tools can be effective today. So as of October 2022, we have nearly 5 billion people across the globe on the internet, which is about 68% of the world's population. So when we analyze the number of people online and their behavior, I want to draw your attention to the number of internet users. So we have nearly 5 billion. So if there's one takeaway from this slide in particular, is that, um, that across the globe, your customers, your prospects, leads, future distributors, future employees, suppliers, basically everyone your business interacts with is online and most are spending most of the day online and the numbers are only growing. So now that the UAE and uh, Okay, there, there was one slide before, Susanna. Sorry. It's fine. A, to, um, a total of 5 uh, billion people around the world use the internet today, um, which is the equivalent to 63.5% of the world's total population. Internet users continue to grow too, with um, the latest data indicating that the world's um, connected population grew by more um, than 170 million in the 12 months to October 2022. So in there, we can see that the Saudi Arabia and the UAE are in the top three countries of internet adoption in 2022. Then this graph really is to illustrate the importance of mobile in the Gulf states in general, with the UAE leading the world in mobile internet connection speeds and Saudi Arabia just behind. This all reflects investment these governments have made in digital infrastructure infrastructures, and the effects of this is something we will see when we discuss websites and marketing. Let's take a quick look at some of the main countries of the Middle East and starting with Egypt. So it's, Egypt is a huge country. It has over 100 million inhabitants. It straddles the Mediterranean and the Red Sea, but it's dominated by the Nile. Almost 72% of its population use the internet. You will see that this compares to numbers like 80, 90% for the Gulf states. But you have to remember um, that over a quarter of Egypt's population is under the age of 12 and that there is a large farming population that is um, still getting connected. And internet adoption is growing really fast, amongst the fastest in the world, in fact. So with 75 million Egyptians using the internet, they spend a lot of time in there, over eight hours. This compares to a global average of about seven hours. So you can see that once online, the Egyptian stays online for video, music, also social media or work. And like Droga, the Middle East as well, everyone uses their phone. So we say 75 million Egyptians are online for eight hours a day. And a lot of that is done through the smartphone. In fact, the average amount of time spent online on their phone, the average on our phone usually is nearly four hours a day. So two takeaways here. One. There are a lot of Egyptians that are online and it's growing fast. And two, they are using their mobile phone phones to do that. A lot of, um, of what they're doing online is communicating. We say 75 million Egyptians were online, while 42 million are using so social media. And that no number grew by over 7%, nearly 3 million people. 
So here, here's a list of the top social media platform, all the usual suspects, but worth nothing the extremes. I mean, 91% use Facebook, 90% are on YouTube. Um, all good news if you want to run social media campaigns. So in conclusion, Egypt is a vibrant, high growth, very mobile friendly market that use and engage with social media. Now let's talk, um, let's take a look um, at Saudi Arabia. So Saudi Arabia is smaller compared to Egypt in terms of the population. There are 35 million. But in terms of GDP and in terms of internet penetration, it's a powerhouse. 98% of Saudis are online, and that despite the fact that 28% of the population is under 14 years old. But I want to draw your attention to two other big characteristics. The first is the mobile connection, which is equivalent to 94% of the total population. So when we talk about a mobile-friendly environment, that is the sort of thing we mean. Many people have multiple mobile phones connections and the average time spent online on there is over four hours. And the second thing I want to highlight is the time spent on the internet. So nearly 35 million Saudis are spending over eight hours per day on the internet, on the internet mostly via their, their mobile phones. One last thing, um, you go uh, when you go to trade shows and meet your Saudi distributors, you all speak English. But remember that Saudis are happiest in the mother tongue and the online world is competitive. So the best is to make sure your Saudi prospective buyer gets the best possible local user experience. We'll be drilling down on which language to use um, later on. So one thing the Saudis are doing online is communicating via social media and all of them are doing that via the mobile phones. So we say 35 million Saudis are online 26, 26 million are active on social media, and most of them access it via their mobile phones. So we begin to see a pattern here. If you look at the various platforms, you will see that YouTube is number one. In fact, Saudi is ranked number one in the world for YouTube use per capita. They watch more videos than anyone else, but they are also very active in Instagram, Facebook, etc. So Saudis are huge in online and serious video watchers, but also like the other countries in the region, they are on their mobile phones. Now let's look um, at the UAE. So the UAE blows the online st stats um, out of the water. Of its population just shy of 10 million, nearly all of them use the internet and use social media. And most of the people, seem to have two mobile phones connection as mobile phone penetration rate in the UAE is nearly 200 percent. Similar to what we saw um, in Saudi and, and Egypt, um, they spend most of their waking day on the internet, over eight hours and a half per day. So 99 percent of the population in the UAE are online um, using social media and the average time spent um, is over three hours. And like we're seeing throughout the region, and this is one of the most extreme examples, 99% access it via mobile phones. And it's interesting to see that, again, YouTube plays a dominant role in choice of social media channels. Now, let's take a quick look at e-commerce as well. So before we dive in into the specifics of websites and online marketing in the Middle East, I wanted to highlight a few other characteristics of the region. The first is e-commerce. You would think that being so plugged into um, a dynamic online, there would be um, a big e-commerce market. But in fact, they have been relatively slow adopters. But this looks like um, it's about to change. So online sales in the Middle East currently equal something like only 2% um, of total retail revenue, as opposed to 15% in more developed regions. While it's still nowhere um, near as developed or complex as the markets in the United States or many countries in Europe, the region is experiencing an indomitable boom. Indeed, um, the Middle East is one of the fastest growing e-commerce markets in the entire world. Even before the pandemic, there were major investments in e-commerce as the region started to enjoy some really strong growth in online B2C and B2B. E-commerce was growing um, at about 24, 25% um, 
per annum in, um, in the region. With that in, in mind, Dubai um, led the charge opening a huge e-commerce um, free zone called Commerce City. In size, it's the equivalent of New York Grand Central Station. It's just next to the airport and it costs about um, $870 million. A few other strategic invest investments include um, Amazon acquired Souk for um, $580 million. Noon.com sets up e-commerce platforms in the UAE and Saudi for $1 billion. Dubai Airport Free Zone launched um, Commercity, 2.1 million square foot e-commerce free zone. And Souk, um, acquired by Amazon in 2017, is the largest e-commerce platform in the Middle East. And of course, Amazon itself. So just in conclusion, I wanted to give you three takeaways from this overview of the Middle East online world. One, they're very plugged in. So this means all your clients and your prospects are online. Two, very mobile. Um, they're doing business on your phone. Um, on your phone is not uncommon. So make sure your website is ready for that. And lastly, they're very into social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or whatever. Um, Egypt and the Arab, um, Arab Gulf states um, use social media to find new products and services. Now let's look at what makes uh, for great websites in the Middle East. Um, Rita, thank you very much indeed. Before we actually get uh, get get into the, the the details, I just want to launch a quick poll. Just to ask. Ask people in the audience, you know, if they're already doing business in the Middle East. If so, in what way? Are they, you know, only through a distributor? Maybe they're already totally online. Maybe there's a mix of both. Maybe you're still thinking about it. And one thing I can say is you're a very reactive audience. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, so Rita, in this in this in this overview that Rita gave us of, of the online world, I think it's it's really really you know a, 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 a um, uh, amazing how homogeneous it all looks you know they're all so plugged into the into the internet they're all on social media they're all using their mobile phones as, as Rita was saying but really I think when we're talking about websites and the online marketing we'll start to see a lot more differentiation I'm gonna uh, close that poll now thank you again very much for answering all that that was great we'll have uh, uh, one or two more polls later on as well so let's now dive into uh, the actual websites so you know what what are the what are the best websites for your um, for your um, for your Middle East prospects? And I think the very first thing we want to talk about is a buyer persona. This is important for any market. It's important for any website and for your marketing. It's who and and in knowing your buyer persona and knowing that journey that the buyer persona takes, building the trust that you need to actually make the acquisition, to make the, the purchase. Um, and there are a few other regions where knowing your buyer persona is as important as it is in the Middle East. You'll see this again and again in this presentation, this emphasis on knowing exactly who your buyer persona is in which market and how they are reacting to it. So I want to give you a little example here. I've listed a couple of questions on the slide, just you know, things that you can think about when you're thinking about international websites and online marketing. So you know, how does your Middle East buyer persona actually find you? How do they engage with you? In what ways do they engage with you? In what ways is that buyer's journey different? Um, and you know, you can differentiate a little bit, just maintaining maintaining brand awareness and, and loyalty to your brand, but just differentiating a little bit. I want to give you an example here of L'Oreal. L'Oreal, um, the, the, the you know largest company in the world for 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 hair products and and, and beauty products. Spot on for marketing. This is the um, uh, screenshot of their US website. Um, you can see these you know, very diverse picture of women uh, with, a, with a sort of US New Yorkish looking skyline behind them, uh, all very engaged in their, in their, in their activities and things, um, uh, very much you know, on computers. Um, if, you, if we look at just a, a tiny bit, then this, this image here that you have now is, um, uh, is is um, uh, uh, actually for Lebanon, <laughs> um, but again, it's slightly different. It's still L'Oreal, but this is now in the Middle East. So this is what a Lebanon person would would, would look at when they're looking at the at their L'Oreal page. 
and, and identify with. So it's not sort of many women, it's just one cleaner image and uh, um, you know the, the, the facial features are very important too. And the third image here, uh, really for, for the Maghreb area, again, a very different image, uh, still the emphasis on beauty products and so on, but just, just slightly different. Um, uh, for that. So again, you know, L'Oreal reacting in each case to their buyer personas in their individual markets. Um, so I thought it was a really good example of how, you know, same website, same company can then just alter a little bit to make sure that they're reflecting their buyer personas in each market. So, you know, how do you, how do you then have the successful buyer's journey in the, in the, uh, in the Middle East with an online uh, presence? And that's really called the local user experience. So we talk about sort of going global. It's really about going local. <laughs> so local user experience looks for the Middle East websites. So there's a couple of things in this, in this list here on the on the right of your, of your of your screen that you should take into account when you're looking at uh, Middle Eastern websites. Obviously keywords, but the language is actually really important. Are you going to be using Arabic? If so, which Arabic or English? Actually, quite a lot of searches are done in English as well. Metric, it's a, the region is metric. Uh, use the right currencies, things like that. Host it locally. So there's a whole bunch also of technical aspects. Digital compliance, mobile enablement, um, uh, uh, optimal hosting, um, the right CRM, um, uh, content management system, and so on. And then obviously contact details, which are easy to access. So you know the, 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 right, you, the right domain name, I have to put in here yourbusiness.ae, that's for the UAE. Saudi Arabia is actually quite hard to get to, it's a restricted one, so a lot of people just use UAE instead. Um, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, and so on. So, you know, use if you're going to build a website, make sure that it looks and feels like a local website. And, you know, there's, there's some things that are easier in the Middle East. One of them is that Google reigns supreme. Uh, so you don't have to deal with a lot of different search engines. You can just focus on uh, Google and how Google will like your website. Uh, so here you have, you know, you have over 90% market share. Uh, YouTube is, is, should really be considered the second largest uh, search engine in the, rare, in the area. And as Rita was saying, YouTube has a huge presence. Uh, Saudi Arabia is the number one uh, per capita use of YouTube in the world. But most of all, I think we want to, the message is search engines are localized. So don't think of, you know, Google in the U.S. It's not the same as Google in the UAE or in Kuwait or in Egypt. Um, for one thing, Google will probably be in Arabic. Uh, so so we're, we're, asked, we're frequently asked, sort of, you know, well, why can't I just why can't I just use my U.S. website? Why can't I use my U.S. website to reach into the Saudi market? or the Egyptian market? The answer is just simply, Google is localized. It has a local presence and it wants to only, it takes the position of the searcher. So it will say, in what way is the searcher, what way is that website relevant for the local searcher? So if I'm sitting in, in, in Bahrain, for example, and I'm going on to, to, to Google, is your US website relevant for me? And if Google thinks it's not, because it doesn't have the right keywords, it's not hosted optimally, it's not, you know, whatever it is, then you will not, you'll basically be invisible uh, for that. So that's, I think, really important to, to know. And I just wanted to bring up a, a silly little example, sort of very, very sort of a pandemic-like example, as we're all sort of in and out of each other's homes here, um, uh, uh, or working from home. Um, so, you know, what if you, what if you had a dog in the middle of a webinar? It's become embarrassing. So you need a dog, a, a sleepless dog toy. If you're in, say, Florida, you go onto Google search engine, you type in Squeakless Dog Toy, you're going to be getting things like Tui.com, Amazon.com, a little blog from Yahoo, uh, uh, things, and things are in dollars, and you know, it's all very nice. That's on the left-hand side. If you're sitting in the UK, and you go also, same search engine, Google, same words, Squeakless Dog Toys, and you go on it, and you will get very different results. Because Google UK, does not believe that Chupi.com or Yahoo.com is relevant for someone sitting in the UK. They'll, they, Google in the UK will start privileging other ones like Lords and Labradors.co.uk, Amazon.co.uk. So again, a different thing. 
Betty and Butch like code UK. So we get a different, same, same search engine, same words, different results. And that's just sort of an example of, of, of how search engines take the local uh, point of view for all of this. Your, what we like to think really that your a localized website is really your best, your best sales rep. And what does it take to make a localized website? I've listed here 10 criteria that we use to uh, define a localized website. You'll note that language is one of them. Uh, you know, but, but things like correct CMS, optimally hosted, uh, um, design adaptation, mobile enablement, those are all just as important and relevant here. So again, those are the 10 big criteria that go into making a localized website for you in the Middle East. Obviously, keywords become really important too. And I have not taken, I, I deliberately did not take an Arabic example since my Arabic is not the best. So I decided to take a, a US versus Canada example. And here we have an example of sneakers versus runners. And, uh, and, and you know, these are very, very close similar markets. But you know, the key, if, if you're in this business, in the athletic business, then you need to make sure that you're using the right term uh, for those markets. Otherwise, you're going to be really just, uh, you know, if you're using runners in the USA instead of sneakers, you're, you're only capturing like 4% of the, of the market, which is, you know, that's really hobbling yourself. Same thing for the Arabic markets. And language becomes incredibly difficult in the Arabic market. One question is, you know, which Arabic? And should you be using English or Arabic? One point, first of all, is that the keywords differ from country to country, not only written, but also in the way that they sound. Um, but, but let's go, you know, so, so, so that's keywords. That then, but did you know that, you know, Arabic is what, the fifth most spoken language in the world? Uh, it's, you know, it, it, has a, it's, it has a huge reach, but there are a lot of different types of Arabic. And one of the, um, to try and get rid of that hurdle, um, the UAE actually spearheaded an initiative to do something called Modern Standard Arabic, MSA. And that's the Arabic that you'll find most likely in the GCC, in the, in the Gulf states. It is not what you'll find, however, in Egypt. So if you're looking for an Egyptian, if you're targeting really the Egyptian market, you really need to go to an Egyptian Arabic. Otherwise, you can use a lot of MSA. Question now is, is someone sitting in Saudi, let's say, are they searching in Arabic or are they searching in English? Because we find that a lot of them are in fact searching in English. And, and here it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one because you want to have an Arabic localized website and then add some English keywords so you could have a mix or make it totally English. Uh, again, that's all about knowing your buyer persona. If your buyer persona is, for example, in the, um, in the uh, medical field or in the construction sector uh, or in the service sector, like the legal sector, you may find, in fact, that they are searching in English and that their main language may well be their business language is English. And therefore, you need to have an English website for the, uh, for the Arabic markets. Joy will give you some examples also later on the marketing side. Another point to take into account um, with your uh, Arabic websites really is the culture. Uh, the culture in, in the Arabic states is so strong and so particular that it really is worth a, a separate discussion when you're looking at your website and also um, for, for your marketing. So one of the most basic but also easily overlooked details about business in the Middle East is the difference in the working week. Friday is the holy day in Islam. And prayers start at noon. Therefore, the weekend in most Middle Eastern countries falls on Friday and Saturday. There's some exceptions, but basically, so the weekend is Friday and Saturday. Important to know. Also important to know that the, 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 the Gregorian calendar is the official norm in most of the Middle East. Saudi baby is the exception. The Islamic lunar calendar does also influence life in terms of religious festivals and events. There are two major Muslim festivals to note, Aid, and Eid al-Adha. The first falls the end of the fast during the month of Ramadan, and the second, the end of the annual pilgrimage, the Hajj. So those typically last about three days. 
governments often extend them. So you'll find that there are two times during the year when you really have an impact on, on, on business life and, and you know, governments can even shut down during that time. Uh, that good idea to avoid planning business around the times of those two festivals. Um, so that, um, and then of course there's this Ramadan as well. Personal, um, the emphasis on face-to-face -face meetings, even though these are countries that are very, very plugged in, very internet savvy, they do also require a level of face-to-face -face meetings, which you know, is, 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 is uh, perhaps beyond what we now know and think of as normal in the US or Canada or in, in, in Europe. There's also something called WASTA. It's sort of like, it's not what you know, but who you know. Uh, uh, in the Middle East, this is a widely exploited system and it's viewed as neither shameful nor underhand. It's simply part of a normal course of business in daily life. If you have high powered friends or contacts in the right places, you're likely to find that bureaucracy and business run more smoothly. Uh, so, you know, and, and, and a system sort of borrowed and returned favors is, is what I would call it. And that's something that, 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 that dominates as well. When you look at their website in particular, um, uh, this is a good way of knowing whether it is localized or not, is going into the Google Analytics and seeing where are you acquiring your, 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 um, where your visitors from. So this is a screenshot of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a, one that's um, targeting the GCC, in particular Saudi Arabia. And as you can see, it's successful because you know, 7,600 sessions come from, South, from Saudi. And uh, the, another thousand from from the, uh, the countries right around the uh, other GCCs like Qatar and UAE. So again, you know, a good way of testing whether your website is is localized or not is looking at those those uh, Google Analytics and, and the acquisitions. See, so that's uh, that's clearly that. Um, in I want also to bring up this this notion of brand consistency and localized design. You know that that first image we had of of, of L'Oreal, and then how you you know can can tell the different countries as well. It's really important, even if you are if you are you know changing your website a little bit to adapt to different markets, that you do maintain a brand consistency. Uh, it you know it's it's, it's very disconcerting for your bio journey in that and and building trust if your brand is not uh, a consistent over different markets. If someone is looking and Building awareness of uh, and, and 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 evaluating you as a potential uh, as a potential uh, uh, supplier, they will you know if they're on your if they're on your Middle Eastern website, they may well go and check out your U.S. website. If there's a discrepancy in the brand, that's not that's not uh, that does not build trust. So here, for example, is a a company that's their U.S. website. Uh, here's an image of their of their South American website. Uh, to show you that, and just to sort of you know see what that, that, that looks like. This is their Mexican website, and here their their Middle Eastern website. Uh, so as you can see, there's definitely uh, you know a, a brand consistency here. The the colors are the same, the the, the logo is the same, and so on. Um, but the, the the writing and content is a bit different. And just and just I guess for that, I wanted to to give you another example, um, uh, one that I which I quite like as well. Um, this is the way to, of, of having brand consistency, but also tweaking it in order to really make it even more localized. So Subway, uh, Starbucks also does this in the Middle East, by the way, for its, for its um, uh, logo. So Subway, very popular in the Middle East, and uh, you can see that, that that logo has been sort of made into looking much more um, relevant for that. So best practice Middle Eastern websites. They will have uh, the relevant uh, domain name. In this case, I've, I've, I've given ex as an example the UAE. So .ae, your business .ae, your business .bh for Bahrain, uh, .com .eg for Egypt, and so on. They'll be mobile first. Remember what Rita was saying earlier about that the prevalence of the mobile markets. You need to choose your language. Is it going to be Arabic, which is you know, which kind of Arabic? Is it going to be English? You know, a mix. You know, what kind of, where, where, how is your buyer persona? What is your buyer persona? You'll probably have videos. They seem to love videos, don't they? YouTubes. Uh, they do like WhatsApp as well, for messaging, and gen generally ways to contact you, that's easy, and good level of social media. 
Now, before we talk about the online marketing, I just wanted to run another little poll, really just to ask you if you have an interest in these online global programs that we run uh, for the different states and provinces, um, if you would like to learn more about them uh, at all. So the, the, you know, for the websites, the Middle East, online global programs as well. Uh, if you have an interest in that, please let us know. And we will, uh, you know, get 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 back to you, or, or circle back to you in, in due course, or send you some some uh, blogs or or anything that we can find that uh, might be relevant for you if you're looking for information. And again, thank you very very much for for all that. That's that's kind of you to get so you're you're very reactive. That's lovely to see. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to close that poll and then turn over to uh, to Joelle. Uh, to talk a little bit about the marketing side. Susanna, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. And good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for, for joining us today. Perfect. We've, got, we've seen, you know, we know everyone's online. We know we have a strong website. Before um, we dive into, you know, what you should consider when taking your digital marketing efforts into the Middle East, platforms, best practices, on the first slide, I really just wanted to start from maybe a little bit from the top and just remind ourselves that online marketing is a great way to bring not only brand awareness, but also to build consideration, evaluation, and then really build those events, build those uh, you know meaningful interaction that will drive the buyer's life cycle. So really taking a person that's never seen your brand or your website all the way through to a conversion, whether that is direct purchases on your website, leads, distributor acquisition, whatever you count as a success, digital marketing can get you there. So one thing to remember is that online marketing is all about creating what we would call digital events. What are digital events? It could be an ad, it could be an organic social media post, it could be a blog, and then it all generates and creates interaction with your brand, with your collaterals, and all of that, you know, is all about reaching the right people, going back to Susanna's point about the buyer persona, with the right message, and we'll talk about language on that, at the right time, depending on where they are on this scale. So before diving a little bit further, I just wanted to bring back that idea that Rita shared with us at the very beginning of how much engagement there is in, uh, in this market. You know, here we can see, uh, you know, the average uh, worldwide, and these were looking at social media users compared against the population. So worldwide, we're around 55, 60%, if I read that correctly. And here I just wanted to point out the UAE is an example, 125%, 123% active social media users. What does this mean? This means that virtually everyone, everyone is on social media, and some have multiple accounts. And we're not here talking about multiple accounts. You're on Facebook, you're on LinkedIn. They have multiple profile per platform. So I think this is fascinating, really just showcases the internet, the social media penetration, but also gives us an idea of how powerful these tools can be. We mentioned WhatsApp is the most popular social media channel in the MENA region. Here we're going even further beyond, a little bit beyond with 63 million Instagram users in the Middle East and region alone which is 10% of the total global users. Think how powerful this could be to reach your prospects and even to support your local partners and distributors alike. So there is a lot that we can do through different social media channels. We talked about YouTube and we'll go into a little deeper uh, into this and we'll just look at some best practice and how actually you can make the most of it and how you'll see the best success. But I always like to start from from a concrete example, you know, here we're looking at stats, we can talk about, uh, you know, what best practices are. But here I just wanted to bring you an example of actually a campaign that IBT Online has been running for one of our clients. And uh, I'm taking here, this is an example from a Facebook campaign. So these I just wanted to show you before we go into any further details and case studies, how important it is to really understand your buyer persona and how they interact uh, depending on, uh, on your target market. So here again, as I mentioned, it's Facebook. We were promoting the same product, same idea through, uh, we're going to the UAE and Germany. Obviously we had the localized imagery, the content and the copy was a little bit different, but the concepts were very much similar and the audience targeting was very similar as well. So if we look at the results for this specific post, the UAE, we were quite pleased with the engagement, you know, 
from the start, we had very good interaction. People were liking it, people were loving it, people were sharing it. They were like, you know, getting other people involved. 314 engagement for 1,700 people reached. We thought we were doing really well. And then we looked over to Germany and was like, okay, we're getting actually more visibility, but no one is really giving us the love that we are seeing across other markets. So if we stopped here, then we would have quite easily inferred that really the the Saudi the the UAE campaign sorry was performing a lot better and then you know that's what we should have um, you know what we should have um, given more budget or more attention to. But then we took this a step further and here I just really want to show you what happens when people then land on your website and start navigating. So and this just highlights how the you know how important it is for you to know each market specifically and what to expect and how to read the KPIs. So you can look at the numbers in several ways. So here we can see the UAE, you have the blue and the, and the red, which is the total sessions, how many people drove back to the website, how many people engaged with us. But then we go down to people actually requesting a quote and wanting to download the brochure, so wanting to actually purchase or showing intent. The numbers here from what you see in Germany with a much lower actual engagement on the website are not that different. And this just shows that it's a lot easier to get top of the funnel or initial engagement in the UAE than it is, for example, in Germany. But then you do need to have the much higher volume to grant yourself the same opportunity for conversion. So here, you know, we know from experience that this is the case in the Middle East and this is how we need to set our campaigns. But then it's also how we need to track success and what each KPI is telling us about our specific buyer personas. So here on, uh, uh, you know, just following from this, I just wanted to bring a case study. We talked a lot about uh, English. We talked about Arabic, website, social media. You know, because we've been talking about lead generation above, I thought this was the perfect uh, example to bring at this point. Uh, here we have Pettibone, Michigan-based, uh, heavy-duty, um, you know, equipment, machinery, uh, manufacturers. They've actually invested in two localized websites for the Middle Eastern market. One, the one on the left-hand side is in English, and the other one is in Arabic. And then they've got a step further. They've also invested in localized digital marketing campaigns. So IBT Online supports them with social media and search engine campaigns that target both the English, uh, you know, portion of our audience is redirecting back to the English website, and we do so with the Arabic side. What does that mean? Are we confusing the message? Are we just reaching our audiences with, you know, we're duplicating effort? Quite the opposite. Here, they really are not only leveraging both languages, but they're maximizing on the search visibility. Whether a, a prospective partner is searching in Arabic or they're searching in English, or if a prospective a customer is searching, they know that they're going to be there. They're going to be at the top of Google looking in English or Google looking in Arabic. But also by having that opportunity, as Rita was mentioning, to showcase content in both languages, they really can make the most of what the audience want. If someone is ready to engage on the Arabic post, they're there. If someone is maybe more used to working in an international environment, their company does all, uh, you know, the procurement in English and that's what they're looking for, then they'll be ready to engage in English. So very much here is whether the prospect are looking for, whether a client or a new partner in the region, Pettibone have got them covered. So this was a very clever way of very much knowing that the buyer persona can fluctuate because they're looking at private, but they're also looking at government contract, they're looking at the military, they're looking at very different industries across the buyer persona. So they they just wanted to make sure that they could reach them all. And this meant having two different, uh, you know, localized presence. And this brings me to a few things to consider when you, uh, you know, you build your online marketing strategy in, in this region. One we talked about is already its language. We have seen uh, uh, English work best for B2B. If you're looking at a platform like LinkedIn, for example, they don't actually have an Arabic supported advertising platform at the moment. So we have seen a lot of businesses being used to engage with, link with LinkedIn in English, researching in English, and that's worked really well. 
But whether you're looking at a B2C or even a B2G, so if you're going more into government contracting, then Arabic is the language of business. That's what people would be looking for. That's what people would be feeling more comfortable digging into the details in or maybe having conversation in. So this is very much a uh, you know very important decision. But we all we often see as that I was mentioning, you know, some keywords in English, you have a title in English, some more details in Arabic, and then you have an infographic in English. It's very common, or it's becoming more and more common to have a mix of English and Arabic within the same page, within the same website, which again might look a little bit confusing to us when we're not used to that, but it's perfectly acceptable and it's very much becoming more and more um, common practice. So watch out for those and that could be the best choice for your business in particular. Advertising is another thing to keep in mind here. The For those of you who are a little bit more comfortable and familiar with something like pay-per-click advertising, Google ads, it tends to be cheaper than the US and uh, cheaper to most countries in Europe, but it's a little bit more expensive than LATAM. So it kind of sits in that very comfortable area where your dollar can go a little bit further, but at the same time, you need to make sure that you have a good enough budget. It's a big market, okay? So we're talking about a fair few countries in there. So don't get your budget spread too thin. Start broad and then, you know, you'll be able to see what is the best cost per acquisition and then streamline your advertising accordingly. Culture is something that for marketing plays a key role when you're looking at social media content, website content, but also something like when to reach out to someone, when to connect on LinkedIn. Make sure that you have right imagery. Make sure that you, uh, you know, take into account who you're trying to reach and what kind of, you know, content to be most reactive to. Social media is busy. You need to make sure that you, you know, cut through the crowd and you have some very good native looking graphics. But also be mindful of cultural events such as Eid, Ramadan. You know, people might be less reactive, more reactive, depending on your line of business in those holidays or in those big, uh, you know, cultural events. So be mindful of that, be respectful of that. And, you know, make sure that you uh, you acknowledge that that would also give your social media accounts that little that local user experience, you know, go global, but go local, make them feel like, you know, what is important to them, make them feel that, you know, what matters to them. You understand their culture and you're mindful of that. So that's going to be a very important thing to keep in mind when doing business in uh, in this in this market. There is one thing is my a bit of my pet peeve before you start launching any marketing campaign, please do make sure that you you have a clear understanding of what you're trying to achieve. This will not only allow you to get better results because you'll be able to optimize, but also it will be it will allow you to see what is actually working, what is not working, and then you know giving you some room for for improvement. So making sure that your social strategy, your marketing strategy is aligned to your business objectives. So we're looking here at an example. I've just taken Facebook here because it is, it is in one platform. There is enough for us to, uh, to spend a couple of minutes looking at that. So here very much it depends at what stage are we targeting users? Are you completely new to the market or have you been in the market for a number of years? Are you attending an event and you want to bring awareness to your brand and to your booth? So here, depending on what your marketing, what your business objective is in that specific market, then here we've aligned some marketing goals and then each of them have some very specific metrics. So an example, if you're looking to grow your brand, then we'll be looking at building brand awareness. We'll be looking at how many followers you can build on your Facebook page, how many people are liking your posts, how many people you can, you can get to share your posts with. So when designing your marketing strategy, very, very important to always be aligned with the overall business objective, which will then give you a starting point to decide what you want to achieve and then what metrics matter the most to you. I'm sure you've all heard of the SMART method, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and timely. Might sounds very 1990s, but this is still the golden rule. You have to make sure that you have some goals that you can track and that you know what you're looking at and then over time, you can review them and uh, if needed, you can make some changes. So this to me is very important because it will then uh, allow you to measure your success, which is at the end of the day, being able to measure your return on investment. 
So in the next slide, I just wanted to, again, reiterate a little bit here. Once you've set your objective, then you can define what success means to you and how you're measuring that. So these are your KPIs or your key performance indicators. And again, could be clicks, could be conversions, could be a completion rate if you're looking at videos. At the end of the day, we're all on sales, but it doesn't quite happen overnight. So we know there are so many different things that we can track in between to determine how well your marketing programs are going. And here again, I'm a big fan of reporting and analytics is a big portion of what we do in our marketing programs. And this very much all comes out to what matters to you as a business goal and how you can track this to get your, your, your buyer persona to match your objectives. Before we move on, I just want to say, please make sure that you're realistic. We all want sales. We all want to break the bank, but start with some like, so, you know, good goals and then you can build from there. One last thing that I know sometimes creates confusion when uh, we make this presentation. So I just wanted to take a moment to remind ourselves when we talk about organic and paid marketing, in this case, social media again, but this could be your SEO versus your um, Google Ads campaign. Organic really means unpaid where you don't have to, you know, enter an auction for your content to be seen. So organic is not necessarily limited to, to SEO, to your website but very much is how Google would rank your website, but it's also how Facebook will rank your website, how YouTube will rank your videos. And the better the content, the more interaction you get, the better organic uh, visibility you will get. So we often see that a combination, a synergistic approach of having a strong organic presence and a good paid social media presence really allows you to grow that community, to grow likes, to grow followers, so in this case, for the media list and market, we always recommend do invest in some paid social media marketing to get you started. And this is going to allow you to build your organic community and your organic followers for the long term. So when I say organic is unpaid, it simply means there is no auction. It doesn't mean it's free because content creation, content management, community management, you know, it still does take some, some good resources. But this is the main difference. And that's how they really can work together. The better your content, the better your results, the higher, uh, you know, your community rate engagement. Conscious of time, I know we want to leave some time for Q&A at the end, but just very much rounding up here. And hopefully you can take this as your uh, key takeaways when you go and review what your, you know, your marketing strategy should look like for the social media, for your Middle East and social media campaigns. Build relationship with your buyer, your buyer persona is the end goal. Set your objective, brand awareness, leads, finding agents, finding distributors. Define your buyer persona, which of the three above and how does that subdivide. Define your KPIs, choose your platforms. All of the three points above should then be able to guide you on what is the best platform for your business to start from. Build your strategy, look at your ad copy, build a content calendar, look at your images, make sure that you've got the right keywords, the right cultural images. The scheduling, think about the holidays, think about the times of the year, placement, and then reporting. As I said, data analytics is what's going to allow you to then, as we say, rinse, lather, repeat. Don't stop, optimize, and the results will come. Joelle, thank you very much indeed for that tour of both the Middle East and best practices for marketing. We've left a little bit of time uh, for, for Q&A and there's a couple of questions in. I'm first going to launch though a, a, the last poll just to ask you know if, you, if you'd like more information about online marketing in the Middle East, online marketing in general, um, if you have an interest also in finding out more about these online goal programs, please let us know and, and we'll be happy to, to, to send you some emails or, 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 or share some links with you. Um, or help in any way we can. Um, so we're just, and again, thank you very much for, for, for your, your click, click through rate. Thanks, I appreciate that. There's also a, a very, very brief survey at the end of this webinar, by the way. We would appreciate if you have a moment. It takes literally a, a minute. Um, it just helps us define you know, the, uh, the, 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 the big concerns that you might have so we know that we're answering the right questions, putting on the right webinars for you. I'm going to close this webinar, sorry, this, this uh, poll now. Thank you very much for, 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 for um, participating in that. I'll just really move on, just a, sort of what I call the sort of takeaways, uh, next steps. Um, 
and then and then uh, we've got a little bit of question time. So the first takeaway we, we'd like to, to to leave you with is just this notion of of, of how important the online world is today. Uh, remember those numbers from the very beginning of the presentation uh, from Rita? Sort of, you know, pretty well five billion people on the earth are you are online, and the average time is seven hours a day. Now, for the Middle East, we know that it's more like eight hours a day, so they're very engaged in it. This is good news. If you're a, 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 a mid-count company, resources are always a bit stretched. Well, you know how to reach your prospects. You know how to generate leads. It's through business development tools, online tools, websites, and online marketing. Everybody can be reached in their localized way, when they want, how they want, in the way that they want when. So that's the the, the, the strength of the online tools that we're, that we're proposing, localized websites and online marketing. Then for the Middle East in particular, you know, you're, as we said earlier, we think that the, the we would like to call your, your, your website is your best sales rep. Uh, make sure that it is uh, fully optimized, make sure that it's working hard for you 24 seven uh, that it is being found and liked by the local Googles and search engines so that your leads, your prospects, your distributors can find it and use it and uh, grow and you grow your brand awareness, which leads to conversions and sales. Quite a few considerations for those Middle East online marketing uh, campaigns. Uh, uh, one of the key ones is exactly getting the language correct. It's very important in in the Middle East, and that's really that knowledge of your buyer persona. How is your buyer persona searching on the web, and you know, really finding that out and grasping that is the key uh, uh, to that online marketing and indeed to websites as well. And then Joel's slide there about you know building relationships with your Middle East buyer personas. That slogan, rinse, lather, repeat. You know, just making sure the sort of best practices for brand awareness, choosing the right platform making sure that you have your uh, the right KPIs, analytics, data analysis, and again, defining and knowing your buyer persona. Uh, our website has a ton of stuff on it. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, um, if you go to the resources page, you'll find a lot of resources, blogs, infographics, webinars, videos, live streams, all kinds of things to learn more about online business development tools, and indeed to learn also about the online global programs um, that, we, that we have and that we um, carry in both the United States and in Canada. And with that, um, we're gonna look at a couple of questions. We've left a very, very little bit of time. Um, I'm gonna start with a question for Rita. Uh, this one came in quite early when you were talking earlier, Rita. Um, if I have a Middle East website and marketing uh, in the Middle East, does that reach into other Arab speaking markets, for example, North Africa? Well, um, first of all, indeed, in North Africa, they do speak Arabic, but the business language um, is French, whereas in the Middle East, it's um, Arabic or English. That means um, when someone is in North Africa, the people look usually, they usually look for keywords in French rather than Arabic or English. So no, we wouldn't recommend using Arabic website to reach North African Arab, Arab speaking markets. Thank you, very clear. Um, uh, and Joelle, perhaps this one for you. For online marketing, are you doing, are you suggesting we do country by country for the Middle East or is this a regional approach? That's a very good question. And what I would recommend is to start with a regional approach. As I said, we're talking about a fair few different markets, but they're also different sizes. I would recommend starting with a regional approach. And then when you have enough data to see whether, you know, any pockets of interest develop, then go more specific, but start broad and then narrow your, your targeting. Absolutely clear. Thank you, Joel. Um, this one, I think we'll answer this in two parts. Um, how successful in your experience do you think using your website and online marketing is for identifying and finding distributors in the Middle East? Um, just from the website point of view, 
Uh, this is something we do a lot. The, the key is getting a really good landing page on your website so that any distributor that comes to your website knows that you're looking for distributors and you have a dedicated landing page for that. And that can even help you do a little bit of triage because you can put in the contact form, dedicated contact forms, which you know can ask specific questions so that you're not inundated with, with, with ones that don't apply to you. So for step one, get your website ready for it with a dedicated landing page for distributors. And then the marketing, perhaps, Joel, you could uh, add something on that for you know marketing for just finding distributors. Yeah, absolutely. We have had uh, terrific successes in uh, our distributor acquisition campaigns. And here very much it goes back to that buyer persona and the specific persona. If you, you know, determine what size of company your distributor should be, obviously the industry and whom you should be reaching out to within this company, then let, for example, a social media approach do that. LinkedIn, you can be super targeted and really put your messages and, you know, very much the content that Susanna was just describing on your website. What is in it for them? Why should they work with you? What, you know, what is this all partnership about? And then let them come and find your website and learn more. But absolutely, it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity to put your brand out there and expand your network. Thank you very much, Joel. There's a couple of other questions, but we have we're, we're out of time. We, we we promised to keep this to one hour, so we will be answering those questions by email directly to you. Um, one's one about domain names. This one about social media platforms. There's also one about um, um, English versus Arabic in responses. We will answer that directly to you. But I wanted to thank my my team teammates, Joel Lazarotto, our online marketing director and Rita Benhara, uh, online marketing manager, uh, for their for sharing their experiences and expertise uh, for online marketing websites in the Middle East. And then most of all, thank you all for attending and joining us today and spending some time uh, thinking about Middle East uh, opportunities for doing business using online business development tools. Thank you, happy, uh, happy rest of the day and um, uh, um, happy also websites and online marketing going forward. Thank you all very much and see you in the next webinars. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.